Hey everyone, it's Logan here. I figured it'd be about time to bring you an update on what I'm working on. This is my go-kart. Uh, now, before you say anything, yes, I know it's made out of wood. Um, the reason I did that is because to teach myself the finer points of welding uh, would take a while. And although I've always wanted to do it, as you can see, this project is taking up my spot in the garage. So uh, I'm kind of just wanting to get it done with. But this is very, very exciting for me. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, I went into detail about how, how I'm doing the motors, the electric motors for this. And I just want to take you through a real quick tour of this, show you how it's going to work. And I expect this to be basically a three-part series. The first one is this. Second one will be um, the finishing touches. And third one will be actually driving it. So here's where we are right now. So this is... The motors. You might be saying, well, where are the electric motors here? Well, they're actually right here. You're looking at them. If you haven't seen my, my videos about how electric motors work, um, then this would be a great place for you to start. Uh, in fact, I'll put the link uh, probably right around here uh, to the playlist for how these work. But basically, there's uh, if you're not familiar, there's two different versions of motors that you can have. You can have an, uh, an AC motor, uh, which is AC current, or you can have a DC motor. So all go-karts, electric go-karts, are going to be running off of batteries, which are inherently DC. So most people, what they do is they have a, a really big, heavy AC motor here, and then they have an inverter. And the inverters have to be able to dissipate hundreds of watts of, of heat, maybe thousands. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, not only is that heavy, but it takes up a lot of space. Plus, then they have a chain that runs down to sprockets. Chains and sprockets are very inefficient. So what I decided to do was actually make hub motors. The entire motor components are inside here. And I have videos about how I made that. That's what that link was. So if you're interested in how to make one yourself, it's very compact. It weighs a lot less than a regular AC motor, and you don't have all that extra inefficiency there. Um, yeah, I know, I, I've got notes here. This is slightly off. I have to straighten it up. That's one of the, the downsides about working with wood, is that if you're drilling a hole and the drill gets caught on the grain and it moves over slightly, and yeah, but I'll fix it. It's coming together. So anyway, so this is where the power box is going to go. Uh, and the seat is going to go here. Now, since go-kart seats are actually expensive, I mean, I was looking at like 60 bucks for the cheapest one. I'm just, I got some really old chairs. I need to get uh, a new dining table anyway, a new, new set. So I figured I'll just use the cushions from there. I'll put a cushion here. I'm going to put a piece of plywood back here and just with some braces and then just put the cushion right there. I know it's kind of ghetto, but it's going to work. So that's not the problem. Now, the way this all works here is here's... See if I can focus there. Here we go. So here's the master switch. Now you might be surprised to learn that it actually doesn't shut off all the power to the go-kart. The reason is these motors will always be connected to the batteries, but there's little sensors in there being brushless motors. There's little sensors called hall sensors. And if those sensors aren't getting any power, they will not allow the motor to spin. So by turning this on and off, uh, that's controlling the power to this sensor right here. This sensor has its own transistor, and that transistor will be hooked up directly to the hall sensors back in the motors. So if this isn't sending out power because it's not getting any signal from this, then the whole cart doesn't move. Now underneath here, let's see if I can... Show you there underneath here. Yeah, it's all taped up now. It'll be glued in the final. Uh, there is a magnet, and that hall sensor detects the magnet as it comes down. Now, right now, this is very crude. It's basically either on or off. On, off. But in the final, there may be some gradations, but for now, this is fine. Um, spring basically keeping it, pulling it back and then just something to keep it from going back any further. So this comes down, the sensor detects the magnet, sends signal to here, and that sends the power to the sensors in the back. 
which then run the motor. So that is all controlled right here. Now the other thing I got is right here. Uh, oh, there you go. It's a bicycle computer, so um, it can see speed and temperature, and this is a really neat one. It's got a whole bunch of fun functions. Time, uh, speed, average speed, max speed. You can switch it between kilometers and, and miles. It also has uh, temperature, I think. Uh, no, that's not the right button. Oh, it does. I don't know how to work it yet. There you go. There's temperature. So that's mounted right there. That sensor is going to go up to the front wheels right here. And you can see I've already temporarily mounted the magnet for that. So that will end up sitting right about here, right about here, and sensing the magnet as the wheel spins. So about the only thing on this whole go-kart that I didn't really build myself are these spindles because getting that to be accurate is difficult. So that's basically what I'm working on here. Again, I know it looks kind of ghetto to start here, but it'll all look good when it's done. Uh, I, the, the steering wheel shaft, I basically just bought a piece of steel tubing and uh, connected it. So. There's going to be, not this one, but similar, a bracket there that spins. As that spins, that moves this back and forth. So there you go. I'm getting really excited. Um, based on the numbers that I'm seeing with these motors here, I should be able to get this cart running somewhere between uh, maybe 25 and 30 miles per hour. Probably doesn't look like it right now, but it will. Still waiting on a few parts, waiting on the brake parts, which is why that other pedal is just kind of flopped down there. Um, oh, and the other thing you might have noticed is this connector right here. Where did that go? That's actually from my voltage meter, my volt and amp meter. And, oh, it's all the way back here. Right there. And I got a, another video on that, too, that's in that series. If you clicked on that link before. Uh, that takes you to the playlist, and I think it's number two or three that talks about this voltmeter. But this thing can register up to 500 amps. So, shouldn't be a problem, as these things are probably each motor is only going to pull maybe 20 or 30. I, I, the maximum should be about 50 for, for short periods of time. So, uh, and of course, you can see all the wiring coming together there, too. So, thanks for checking this out. You'll want to stay subscribed uh, because in. Within a couple weeks here, this thing's going to be done. And uh, just have to wait on a couple other parts that are coming up. Uh, it's all going to be painted, so it's going to look way better than it does now. You'll barely be able to tell it's wood. And then uh, after this project, my next project is going to be a coil gun. Uh, so if, uh, if you have any interest in that, you might want to stay or subscribe if you haven't, or stay subscribed if you are. Um, but thanks for checking this out guys. Let me know what else you want to see. Like I said, there should be about two more parts of this. And uh, like if you like it. I mean, go ahead and dislike if you didn't, but then let me know what, what else you want to see, what I could do better. And uh, of course, have a great day. We have All I have to our say is, missile. oh yeah. That went right. Does right. that not look awesome? <laughs> Oh, so it's obviously not entirely finished. I have to get another one of these on the other side. But that's cool. I'll have to cut these off. <laughs> this side's going to be a little bit tougher to do because I still have to I have to pull all the wires out. So thanks for checking it out. And then drill the hole and cut it and then 